This week we're learning about assessment of reading and literacy skills. We're going to start this week with our story of the week called Enemy Pie by Derek Munson. Listen to the story read and brainstorm how to use the story across the curriculum. Check your answers on the next slide and drop your answers in the weekly literature sharing drop box on D2L. This is the answer slide for our story of the week. It has three book links for you, a Pinterest board, the Storyline online book website ideas, and also the book and author website. So you can get a lot of ideas for Enemy Pie there. This is our this is my ideas for the story. It also can be found on D2L in the presentation uh, file folder for the week if you want your own copy. Read our message for the week, and when you get to the bottom, I want you to think about when I say the word assessment, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Don't think too hard. What is your immediate reaction when I say assessment? Click here to go to the Padlet board and share your answers. This will be worth uh, part of your participation points this week. Your weekly journal entry is listed below. I want you to think about it as you walk through our presentation this week. I'm asking you to compare high stakes assessments to authentic assessments. How will you as the teacher prefer to assess your students and why would this be important to you as the teacher? Our first uh, area for this week's presentation is different kinds of assessments. We're going to start with an exclusion brainstorm and I want you to look at the list of words and find which word does not belong as a form of assessment. You can check yourself on the next slide. You do not need to drop box, this, drop box your answers anywhere. Then we, moved on, we move on to a vocabulary predictor activity. I want you to click on the die and roll it online and read the number to match the number on the die. So if you roll a four, you're going to predict the definition of formative assessment. If you roll a one, you'll predict high stakes assessment and so on. If you click here on our Padlet board, you can put your prediction about this form of assessment and pay attention to these words because they will be important vocabulary words and headlines this week in our presentation. We're going to compare assessment to evaluation on this slide and I want you to make sure that you understand there's a difference between the two. Then we're going to look at current trends in assessment. This has a Listen and Learn podcast to explain this to you. We move on to different kinds of high-stakes assessment, and there is a podcast at the bottom for you to listen to. And then some problems with high-stakes assessment. Again, the Listen and Learn podcast will share them. The next form of assessment is authentic assessment, and you can click on the podcast for more information. And then we're going to do a closed vocabulary sort. The closed vocabulary sort, if you remember, means you have headlines at the top and you have to just put the thing, the uh, vocabulary below in categories. Now, this sort can be found on D2L in the weekly presentation file folder, but you don't have to print it and use it. It's fine. You can just take a piece of paper and write down the two columns and add the words in each column. But most importantly, I want you to click on the next slide. It has the answers listed, but it also has a video explaining each of these kinds of assessment. And I do want to make sure that you listen to the video on the next slide uh, because it really explains and gives you examples of each form of assessment. Now we're moving into a form of assessment called a running record. And this is going to show you how to administer this informal assessment. It gives you some history of the running record, and actually you'll watch someone complete a running record. It's important that you watch the video and see how it's done, and then click on the podcast. Actually, start with the podcast, and you'll watch the video second. This video uh, and slide show you how to score a running record. There's a whole lot of information on this slide. I want you to start with a podcast in the corner, and it'll walk you through all the rest of the information on the slide. This is your own cheat sheet slide for doing your own running records. Listen to the podcast below, and then each of these forms can be found in the presentation file folder in D2L. So if you would like your own copy or you'd like to pin it for later, head over to D2L in the presentation file folder for the week. Then you're going to have a try it out activity, and this is an activity where you're going to uh, go into D2L and get this weekly, um, it's a running record form, it's in the weekly presentation files. It's very important that you get this form to complete this activity. So head over there, grab it, and come back. 
Then you're going to listen to this video. It's a child reading the story called On Vacation, and I want you to grab those cheat sheets from the prior slide, and I want you to mark a running record for this child. Pretend she is a student in your classroom and you are taking a running record of her as she reads. Then I'd like you to watch the video at step three to see how I completed my running record of this text, and we'll follow that up with a video on how to code this activity. So we look at the mistakes the student made and we code them for meaning, structure, and vision. And we talked about these so far. This will tell you what you need to do as the teacher next week with the student. So this is what we really do as teachers. We have them read for us, we take a running record, we code it, and then we know, oh, next week I need to teach this student whatever skills they were deficient in. Uh, this is the purpose of a running record. I would like to see your running records, so Dropbox them in the weekly participation Dropbox. And then I want you to head right here to the Padlet board that tells you, um, give, you're going to tell me what this student needs next week. So you're going to give a teaching recommendation for this student. Our third section is informal assessment, and we're going to learn about multimodal assessments. Listen to the podcast for more information. Portfolio assessments, listen to the podcast for more information. Teacher observation, again, listen to that podcast. Also on this page, there is a um, click here, and guess what? It's not a Padlet, but what it is is an article that takes tells you about using Evernote as a resource for teacher observation recording. So if you're in interested in learning that, you can click there for that information. Then I want you to look at the online resources out there for assessment. And you can click right here, and this is my Pinterest board, and that will show you what I have collected for assessment. Also, you can click on the computer, and it'll take you to a Reading Rockets article about guiding, um, guiding your instruction using assessments. And then uh, you will post on our Padlet board any questions you may still have about assessment, or you can share a great idea. Anyone who posts a question here, I will answer that in the weekly sharing for um, the recap. So make sure if you do have a question, you put it right there in Padlet. And we'll wrap things up this week with our weekly assignments. This week, you have your weekly journal entry to Dropbox to me. And again, that was compare high stakes assessments to authentic assessments. How will you prefer to assess your students and why would this be important to you as a teacher? Then I want you to complete the weekly literature sharing and Dropbox your ideas for enemy pie. Uh, you have four things to Dropbox for Padlet. That's slide four, slide six, slide 20, and slide 25. And you have weekly participation activities to Dropbox. Those are slide 14 and slide 20. So your four Padlet activities, I'll just go and read for your points. And then you have two things that should be in the Dropbox for the week. Uh, also, start pinning for assessment. Uh, that The slide, the previous slide, is a great place to start your pin board. And then move on. You need 10 by the end of the semester. And then for, for continuing on for next week, you can skim Chapter 11 on writing, because that's our new topic. And then um, you should be finishing up your work on the Children's Book List Project and the Curriculum Alignment Project. Those are going to be due the end of February on the 28th. So that is getting close. Actually, our semester is winding down very quickly since it's our quick seven week. Um, hang in there. You've been doing fantastic. Um, most of you have gotten all your presentation points and participation points the last couple weeks. I'm keeping track of everything. And uh, again, any questions you have, please let me know.